Hey y'all, it's Josh McQueen here from Mad River Outfitters, and today we're tying a uh, Deceiver style single bucktail, and uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out more of these and more flies like this. So let's jump right into this fly. So what I'm doing today with this bucktail fly is tying it a lot like you'd tie a standard deceiver pattern. Um, I'm going to tie the bucktail on thread cones. Uh, there's two different hooks that I can use to tie this fly. And basically the, the main thing that I'm gaining out of those two different hooks is one's a lot lighter, which is this Partridge of Redditch 4 uh, Universal Predator hook that I've got in the vise now. And the other one is a lot heavier, and it's a Gamakatsu SL12 saltwater hook, and that's going to sink way faster. And so that just kind of depends on whether or not I want a fast sinking fly or a lighter fly that's going to hang towards the surface more that I can make pauses with. Um, the main profile of this fly is going to be sort of, uh, you know, a very hollow kind of look to it. The, the, the fly I'm going to cinch my thread down on these cones at various pressures throughout the tie as I come forward to make a more cone shape, make, the, make that bucktail stand out around that hook. So I'm going to start with some uh, Danville's 210 denier flat wax nylon thread. This is just chartreuse. You can really use about any color for the thread, but I like the way that this uh, blends in. You're not going to see much of it, but it does blend in a little bit with the uh, with the, with the high vis yellow, um, the fluorescent yellow bucktail that I'm tying here with, it'll, that thread's going to blend in a little bit with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and start my thread. A standard thread start. I'm just going to run that thread back to the back. And I'm just going to trim that little bit of tag that I got there. And my very first cones are going to be smaller cones. So I'm just going to build up a small thread cone here. Not much of one at all. And I'm going to go ahead and take the longest portion, which is usually in that lower third of your bucktail. I'm going to take the longest portion. And I'm try, going to not try to make this too awful thick. This fly is going to be a little thicker than, than some bucktails would be from the standpoint of I want it to be a little bit more buoyant. I'm just going to trim the end of that level. And set that right up on the cone so that I have probably just about a quarter of an inch at the most of the bucktail past that cone. And that's going to be, I'm just going to kind of work all that down evenly over the hook. And that's going to be where I'm going to tie that thread right against that cone on that quarter of an inch or so material that we have left. And so that first piece is just a tail extension. That's the end to give it a decent amount of length. We're not going to have much volume there. I'm not going to be able to cinch that very tight against that. So we're not quite to the point of where that's going to puff out. Work all that down. And then I'll come about almost a half of an inch forward from the back of the thread tie and build another cone and we'll start to pronounce this cone a little bit more. Make this cone just a little bigger. And I'm adding just a little bit more thread to the back of the cone so that I can stack it up on there and make it a little thicker. You're not going to see that anyway. As you keep adding bucktail, that's going to shroud and cover that. So if, that's, uh, if there's just a little bit of extra material back there, that's not a big deal. And of course, I'm just pulling a little bit of the front end of the bucktail to find only the longest pieces, get the little short ones out of there that aren't going to stick. Now this one, you'll want to work that bucktail twisting back and forth with your fingertips and then holding with the other hand in between so that we can kind of get that bucktail all around that at different angles. And if it's not completely even, that's not a big deal, but we just want that to be mostly even. And now we'll start to cinch that one down a little bit more as we tie in and you can start to see that bucktail puff out around that, uh, around that hook. And then if I got a couple of little spots in there that I'll patch in that maybe I didn't get the bucktail completely around the uh, thread cone, take a few smaller 
selections of bucktails and then I'm just going to patch that stuff up and cinch that back down. Same thing about a quarter of an inch of bucktails left out of there. There you can see we're starting to cover that up and that's starting to puff out real good. And once I've got a pretty even amount all around there, which I do here, I'm just going to come forward again about a half of an inch and then there's a lot more thread work to do here once I get into about cones three and four until I get to my collar transition up front I'm just gonna start making these cones a whole lot bigger I'm still using some of the longer pieces that I can get on this fluorescent yellow. I won't start cutting my bucktail down until I go into my collar transition. And you just got to be careful doing this because this is the part where you really start to cinch that thread down against that cone and you want to make sure that you don't break that thread. That is why I like a heavier thread like this flat wax nylon, but you can still break that thread right in the middle of tying this fly and that's definitely not what you want to do. So I'm just kind of taking my time, feeling it out as I'm cinching that down to give me that puff that I'm looking for. And you can see it's really starting to puff out around that hook. So that was on this hook on the Partridge or Redditch 4 aught. That was cone number three. And I'll probably get to about cone number four right here. And then that's where I'm going to make my uh, collar transition. And to really give this fly a lot of great body and length, I'm also going to, uh, prior to that color transition, tie in some big fly fiber in, uh, in an orange. And this will just give it that kind of sunset look. Three colors, three main colors, a really bright big fly. This is probably the hardest part about this fly and definitely uh, one of the things that's it's hard to stay focused because it's kind of a little bit of boring work when you're sitting here really trying to do this thread work but this is where the the magic of this fly is done in the thread work and making these cones they have to be pretty precise they have to be tied just right you're trying to keep as much of that thread built up in that cone shape around that hook you want to try not to bring too much of that thread forward or your cone will start to uh, lose its taper, lose its steep angle. And on this next one in particular, where we're going to have a whole lot of material tied in front of this cone number four, this is, this is where we really want to make sure we have a nice steep angle that we can cinch that thread down around and make that material really pop. Almost done here. I think we've got a pretty nice size cone there with enough angle to really tie in just a little bit more of the longer fluorescent yellow bucktail that we have. Cinching that down pretty tight right away, right up against the base of that cone and that's going to allow that bucktail to really shroud and puff out around that hook. 
from a rear view you can actually see in and see most of the shaft of the hook and the, and the thread cones but from the side view it's given it a much more fuller body that's what's going to puff out as you pause that fly when you're stripping it and it's going to condense down as you strip it forward and really give it that kind of undulating fishy look And that one's pretty well covered. Again, really cinching that down tight around that cone. There's a lot of material in this fly. It's going to be a heavier fly with the bucktail. Um, definitely an eight weight plus fly. And that's what you want because the more of that bucktail that's in there, this fly is just super buoyant. This is a fly that I'm kind of more fishing, hanging it pausing it as I go, making those uh, fishy actions and then stopping it, which is when uh, those pike or smallmouth are going to come up and suck that thing in. So now we're going to use this big fly fiber here and an orange. And there's multiple different colors embedded inside of this one product. There's some bright orange in there, some light orange. There's a little bit of flash in there a little bit of crystal flash that gives it that kind of shimmering look. And uh, what I want to do with this is get myself probably just about two tie-ins, maybe three at the most. And I want to just make sure that I've got at least a, a handful of each different color variation and the flash that's in this spread out all the way around the cone shape of that fly and I want to have multiple different strands running along not covering up the bucktail but you want to be able to blend it over top of this fluorescent yellow bucktail so I'm going to find myself a couple of decent strands here and then I want to make sure that this actually goes back about two inches, maybe an inch and a half to two inches past the bucktail. Um, so I'm just going to kind of measure that out as I go and see where I want to be. About right there looks good. It's a couple of inches past the end of the fluorescent yellow bucktail. <clears throat> I'm going to cut this off, level it out real good. And it doesn't have to be perfectly level at the end, perfectly straight, because I'm just going to kind of metal it around there anyway and leave a little bit hanging out before I go into my collar transition. But I'll just go ahead and turn this fly on its side and then I'll start to again kind of work and twist that material around that cone area so that it starts to spread out all over the different parts of the fluorescent yellow bucktail that we already have down as a base. And then just a couple of good cinches, not too tight. And I can actually use then my fingers to spread that out a little bit more and place it in the little random places that I want to place it. And you'll start to see you'll get this big fly fiber to really shroud around that bucktail there. So we'll find a couple more strands here for the rest of the top and the other side. We'll see if that's about the right length. And that's about right right there. And again, just placing that down. It doesn't have to be completely accurate. You want a little bit of that hanging out. When we transition into the pink or whatever color you want to use, uh, we're going to cover up all that anyway. We're just kind of cinch that down lightly, work it around there. Then I'm just going to check my distribution of the big fly fiber and see if I'm liking where it's falling, where it's kind of laying down. And of course you're going to lose some of that material as you go, but that's about the right amount of it there. Again, you don't want to be covering up. You just want to give it that little bit extra profile. We don't really want to cover up that fluorescent yellow bucktail by any means or change the color of it. And now we'll go ahead and start to build right off of that where we left off a little bit of a cone again, right in front of where we've tied all that in. And 
And we're going to go right into our color transition into our light pink. With this light pink though, I can select some of the longer bucktails that are just simply because they're straighter on this bucktail. But what I'm really looking for is the stiffest possible sections of this bucktail that I can find. So this is pretty good up in here. And as long as it's at least a finger length, that's what I'm gonna shoot for on this. I can change that, make that variation greater or smaller, but I'm gonna go for about an index finger length for me on this. I'm just gonna measure that bucktail out against my index finger, cut it down to an index finger length. And that way that that pink isn't dominating that fly, it's gonna cover about the front half of that fly for this transition. Working it on there the same way that I was with the fluorescent yellow. The tie hasn't changed at all. The only thing that I really want to watch up here with the stiffer bucktail, I want to make sure that that's tied down well and that this head's not going to come apart on me. So I'm going to start using a lot smaller amounts of material as I tie this in. And it should take me a little bit more time to tie this in. And just trying to get that blend to cover that entire transition area. Every one of these is going to be a finger length. And that little bit of material that I'm leaving out, I want to make sure that that's going to stop just shy of the eye of that hook because that is going to be the foundation and the base for the final cone, which is going to be the head of the fly right there. So that last little bit of tying in with that pink is where we'll make our, make our cone style head with the thread and where we'll finish this fly. And I'm just patching it in, working around the fly from the far side of the fly towards me on the close side over here, just working it around, making sure that I, I get it as even as possible. Now I'm starting to build that cone forward. And I've tightened a lot down on my original collar transition. And start to build the back of that cone up pretty steep for the final tie-in. And I'll go ahead and rest that thread right at the end of the cone. Should be right up snug, right by the eye. And the main thing is, is we just want to try to keep that back a little bit. I'm about right where I want to be, pretty close, without trying to crowd the eye of that hook. That side's pretty well covered. And we'll tap in the rest of this side and then we'll move on to securing our head.
And really because after the collar transition, the cones become so much closer, that's what's gonna give you the more defined look in the taper. You can see how the taper of the bucktail really starts to fan out off of the, uh, taper of the pink bucktail starts to really fan out off of the fluorescent yellow and away from that big fly fiber and that head that finger length bucktail. You can do it a little shorter if you want, but as you begin to cinch that down and really fan that out, that's that head that's going to make this fly dart and uh, push in different directions as you strip the fly. We got one little spot here on this end that's not quite fully patched in. I'll just patch that up. And it's a pretty good shape there. And I'm just going to pull, make sure all my materials pulled back as much as possible. Give it the last few cinches down to tighten it up. Really cinching that down as much as possible to make that bucktail puff. Without making that head too big. And I actually want a decent amount of material there because I really like to put a lot of head cement on mine and make sure it's tough and rugged because this thing's going to be in the mouth of uh, a lot of toothy critters and it's going to get shredded on a little bit. So we want to make sure that it's a pretty rugged, well-built fly if it's going to last. So right there is where I can go ahead and uh, pull my whip finisher out. Again, I want to make sure that I've got all that material pulled back as much as possible. Maybe moisten it a slight little bit and then pull it back to make sure it's out of the way of the, uh, of the whip finisher there. And then one, two, three turns. One, two, three turns. And then one more. I'm just gonna do three by three turns. On the whip finisher, pulling back and away from the fly, take my tension scissors and just give them the little pop. And then to finalize it, just gonna take my hard as haul head cement and give it a couple of nice light brushes all the way around the head. And there I've got my single deceiver style bucktail in a sort of a grapefruit or sunset color. Uh, there's multiple different colors that we can go to and, and to make our transition. I like the two tones with another tone of the big fly fiber, two tones of bucktail. Um, this particular color for me is my number one producer uh, for pike that I catch here in Ohio and smallmouth. This is the, my number one go-to fly for pretty much almost all of the big pike that have been on my boat this season. Um, this thing is just an absolute damage dealing machine and uh, it's just a great simple pattern uh, as you can see here doesn't take a lot of material doesn't take a lot of time to whip a few of these out and uh, you're ready to head to the river.